Oh, so my scene in Blow was with Paul Rubens, right, Pee Wee Herman, and Johnny Depp. And I, and I, and I really said this, like, I, I, I don't know those guys, they are very nice, but I, I showed up, I go, hey, is anybody in this scene not on probation? <laughs> and Johnny Depp's like, Johnny Depp's like, what did, what did you do? I go, oh, I set the Tonight Show on fire. And he's like, yeah, why'd you do that? And I was like, I don't know, I guess I thought it was funny. And then I go, I go, you smashed up that hotel. And Johnny Depp goes, in my defense, the hotel room made the first move. <laughs> Which is funny. And then we both look at Paul Rubens, we both go. Yeah, anyhow, hey, uh... That's a true story. That's Johnny Depp. That's the prettiest human being, besides being... Oh, no, you don't even know, man. Up close, he glows. His skin was... I mean, he's super talented. I'm a huge fan, but I also... He's just beautiful. Like, I wanted to touch him, but I, I didn't. I didn't, because I'm professional. You don't touch the other actors. I learned my lesson with Gutenberg. I fucking... No, I never touched Steve Gutenberg. Although I did crap in his trailer once and didn't flush. I've never told that story. <laughs> that was about... I know what it was about. Gutenberg's like, hey man, anytime you want to use my trailer. So I did. All right, so... Oh, where was I? Johnny Depp. Like, I, did, I wanted to touch him, but I didn't. And, Cause he looks like a porcelain doll up close. All right, I feel like I'm losing you. Look, he transcends sexuality. First of all, I can say he's a good looking guy. Doesn't mean I want to bang him. Although, <laughs> I, I don't know, I'd be fucking, I don't know if I see him, it'll be uncomfortable, but Jesus Christ, that's a good looking man. Look, <laughs> look, I don't give a fuck who you are, male or female, gay or straight. If it was him or Rosie O'Donnell, that'd be the quickest goddamn decision any of us ever made in our lives. We would all be, <laughs> we would all be in the depth line. Personality alone. I don't know if that's gonna be on the special. <laughs> what was this joke about wanting to fuck me in Glendale? <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> My life is a black boy. Um, I am not on Twitter, speaking of it, or, or Facebook. Um, and if you're talking to me, it's not me. And my daughter came in, she's like, Dad, there's some guy trying to get laid saying he's you on Facebook. And I was like, oh, oh, we gotta stop him. <laughs> no, it really wasn't me. He's not trying to pick up your friends, right? All right, yeah. um, <laughs> And I was trying to think, like, why would you say you're me in cyberspace, you know what I mean? And I figured it out. Like, if you say you're, like, George Clooney, and then you meet the person, and you're not George Clooney, you know, you're not George Clooney. Harumph, I'm leaving. Fuck you, girl. <laughs> but if you say you're Bobcat Goldthwait, and you're not Bobcat Goldthwait, you know what I mean? You still got a dog in the race, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, really? You're gonna fuck Bobcat Goldthwait? Uh, could I at least get a reach around in the parking lot? <laughs> I had a woman, this is a true story, it sounds like, a, I, trust me, I have a large ego, but I had a woman come up to me in an airport. Wow, there's another untapped comedy bonanza. Comics never take on air travel. But I had a woman come up to me in an airport, a true story, and she goes, uh, I don't mean to insult you, but you look like Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> a goddamn thing to say back. I was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I was playing a college and, um, and they had a mascot and this mascot was a horse. It was Texas Tech and he'd run down the field after every touchdown. Da -da 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 -da. And he ran down the field and he ran right into the wall. <laughs> the horse ran into the wall and, 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 and cracked his head open and died. No way, it gets funnier. And then, <laughs> and then I had to do a show. And it was their homecoming. I'm like, how bad does your team suck that the mascot commits suicide? 
and the whole school was like, boo, boo. Even the boo had a southern accent. Boo, you, you, boo. I said, how did this happen? Did the coyote paint a tunnel on the wall? Did the horse think he had a shot at freedom? All my stories seem to be about, I went someplace and then pissed somebody off. I'm noticing a pattern. Well, let's give it up for the real heroes, the Chilean miners. <laughs> They're not fucking heroes. They were guys that just got trapped in a fucking well. They didn't do shit. <laughs> baby Jessica did that when she was a baby. She just... <laughs> the heroes. You know those guys were fucking each other. You know that, like, <laughs> as soon as they go, hey, we're trapped, and they're going, ah, ah, you know, maybe, maybe they weren't, but they were wearing sunglasses when they came out. <laughs> those guys had to be fucking each other. There's no way. 30, 30 days, they're just, just get the fat guy. He feels like a woman. Um, you know? Mm. Hey, we're heroes. Um, <laughs> That'll be a good court case. Was this the guy that raped you? I don't know, it was really dark, I couldn't. <laughs> Can I smell his penis? <laughs> yes, it is him, he's Mr. Minty. That's what we used to call him, Mr. Minty. <laughs> Senior Minty, as you would. Um, I don't think it's funny when people die. Well, that's a load of shit. I actually do think it's funny when people die. I, uh, I, I not everybody. You know, I'm, I'm sensitive, I guess, to a point, but like, there was a guy who died, uh, who climbed into a polar bear cage in the Central Park Zoo. And uh, I mean, I feel bad, I guess, for his family. I don't know, I think he was probably a little nuts. But they said he'd been harassing the polar bear for five days before he climbed into the cage, you know? And, uh, and I, I'm not trying to be racist, but he was like, a, he had a Latino name. I just envisioned this like Spanish guy every day outside the polar cage, like, Hello, hello, polar bear. <laughs> hello, polar bear. Do you think you're so much better than everybody else? You ain't shit, polar bear. You ain't shit. You're a corporate whore. Uh, <laughs> and he climbed in the cage and got eaten. <laughs> Imagine that, like getting that phone call. Hello, it's the New York State Park Police. Your uh, son got eaten by a polar bear today. Is that you, Chewy? <laughs> Am I on the radio? <laughs> this is a Hollywood story, actually. I was, uh, I was in a store, and um, Kirsten Dunst, the young girl from the uh, Spider-Man movies, was in front of me, and I recognized her. Uh, I didn't recognize her from Spider-Man. I actually recognized her from 15 and uh, pregnant on uh, Lifetime. I like, I love my Lifetime movies. <laughs> I really do, whatever. Young guys, you know, fuck sports. If you really wanna get some play, learn about Lifetime. They don't wanna hear about your goddamn team, you know? You go, oh, did you see Marky Post as an accurate portrayal of a heroin addicted mom in Chasing the Dragon? Bam, they'll close the fucking deal. And oh, I saw Tori Spelling and Mother May I Sleep with Danger. And they go, oh, he's a sensitive guy. Then, <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my sexy tricks from your old friend Bob Scratch Goldfarb. So I recognized her from 15 and pregnant, and I got kind of nervous. And clearly, I was trying to make her laugh or something. And uh, this is a true story. I know they keep saying that, but they are all true. Uh, and and she, she, he drops this vase, and it made a really loud noise. And, uh, it, it, and the guy behind the counter, because he knew who she was, instead of saying, uh, you know, hey, you break it, you bought it, which they would say to you or I, the guy goes, oh, are you okay? And I go, I pooped a little. <laughs> I'm only telling you that because I don't. <laughs> it's fucking horrible, and uh, uh, I wanted to die. She looked at me like I had, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I pooped a little. I know you're in your 20s, and I'm almost 50, but I pooped a little. Isn't that funny? Don't you get it? Feces is in my pants right now. That's the joke. <laughs> That's 
very Tom Kenny. <laughs> and so I poked a little. See, that's what tonight was about. The producers and directors said, we're going to keep your name there because it's about branding. So, so now, if you're flipping the channel, you stop and you go, oh, Bobcat, right? Because I got to get all caught up. These young people, they know how to Twitter face and... <laughs> If I want to be a comic, I got to learn how to, you know, I pooped a little. That's going to be my catchphrase. <laughs> I wish I thought about that earlier and that would show up right now across my forehead. I pooped a little. All right. I wanted to die. I pooped a little. You know, oh, aren't you pithy? You're the wittiest man I've ever encountered, Bob Scratch Goldfog. I pooped a little. You're like no coward. Pshaw. <laughs> That's gonna be my get her done. I'm gonna have a, I pooped a little t-shirts out in the lobby after the show. <laughs> <laughs>